Oh, girl. Hello there. I'm the Velvet Snatch, and I'm here at MX Drag Great Britain. Now, who are you, my dear? I think we've met before. Tell us a bit about yourself. I am satin addict. Satin like the planet, not the material. I'm not addicted to satin. I'm more addicted to velvet. Mm. Um, and I'm from Gateshead. Yeah, you'll find us in Newcastle, primarily Bobbies, <laughs> floating around, whether I'm in drag or not. And now... What inspired you to enter this competition? Um, actually, funnily enough, I was like sort of an alternate. Somebody dropped out and I got asked mm. and pushed by Pebble. And I was a bit... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just just okay, be honest, stay forward, Pebble. I just... forced into this. I'm here against my will and I'm tired now. No, honestly, <laughs> um, I, I, I did consider doing it and I kind of just didn't pursue it. And then finally this happened and I thought, oh, it's kind of fate. Like, I'll just do it. And I've had mm. such a good day, so I'm really glad I have. I just thought all the like sort of vectors that are... Um, part of it like the um fundraising and stuff it was it just all seemed pretty exciting like yeah i get to do good mm. i love clothes so i get to do do a few runways it's just, it's right up my street i thought why not yeah i mean what's your favorite element of the pageant um i don't know like i said the two i mentioned are the fundraising and the runways so i, I love fashion i love creating a conceptual look um, so I'm excited for that because I think as well you can really, really portray a message with um, visuals. Like I love to do that um, in concepts. But I mean, the fundraising just it just is the best part. Like because it's, it's it's something. I mean, a lot of drag queens. I've done a lot. Of, I've not a lot of charity gigs, but I've done a few, and um, it's always nice to do. So to actually like sort of do one and head one head fundraiser myself and. Um, it's it's quite an exciting prospect, and I'm quite excited to do that. It's nice. No, I think it'd be great. I mean, uh, and as a non-binary person, what what got you started in drag? How did that come about? Um, so I started doing makeup during um lockdown, yeah. and I was I loved watching drag and stuff mm. like that. So I was always like liked drag, and I just started practicing makeup, and I thought, oh, why don't I just start doing drag, mm. and um. I started, it was actually drag that I discovered my identity. It was more, I felt really comfortable blurring the lines of gender. Even when I've went to the more femme side of drag, which I often do do and I do like it, um, it doesn't feel like the comfort place. Like it always, this androgyny yeah. feels like massively the comfort place. So um, it was kind of drag that, it was kind of the reverse way. Drag helped us find my identity, which was exciting. It's fun, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, which is another amazing aspect of drag, essentially. It really is, yeah. I mean, there's so many people that I know that have, like, came out as trans femme or mm. whatever just to experiment with drag. Like, it's a really, really good um, way to explore gender and mm. yourself and even your hobbies, like like singing. I didn't... I stopped doing for a long time because I didn't have this drag persona to sort of play with it and, yeah. and now I've got it I do and I, I'm singing again which I used to do when I was younger so it's quite nice <laughs> and what would it mean for you to win the competition um it would mean quite a lot actually because I feel I, I'm quite like a politically driven person I did a degree in politics and um to say Lavender go and speak in Parliament, that's like such an amazing opportunity and it's something I'd absolutely love to do maybe not the most articulate person these days however um it would be really, really good to go and stand for something and um, press forward as a non-binary person. Um, we're often qu quite unrepresented and um, sort of disbelieved or argued yeah. with. We're constantly in a plight with the media and stuff. People like Piers Morgan. Um, uh, yeah. We say people, but... Yeah, you know. yeah I mean, that's a stretch. Um, and a constant plight to try and sort of prove our identity and I just think it, to be a person like with a national stage um, to, for my drag mm. and being a non-binary person to like stand up and be like, I'm here, it's, it's quite yeah. powerful. No, I mean, what advice would you give someone starting out in drag? Remember why you're doing it. You don't have to, like you're choosing to do it. You don't have to do drag if you don't want to. You might, you can just enjoy it and you can just watch it if you want. Remember why you're doing it and have fun with it. Like you, no one's forcing you to do it. Just have fun. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to work all the time. You don't have to want to work. You don't have to want to perform. You don't have to. It. I mean, drag's evolved so much these days. You don't have to be a performer and you don't have to be a working queen. If you just want to experiment with looks, if you just want to have a character that you can play with, then yeah. just do that. Just remember why you're doing it and do it. Yeah. And where can people find you? 
Um, like I said, you can find us in Bobby's. I'm quite literally always there. It's my second home. Maybe my first home at this point, honestly. Um, you find us there all around in Newcastle. Um, I'm often bar hopping, like me, you know. <laughs> and on socials, you can find me mainly on Instagram, Saturn Dot Addict. Thank you so much for speaking to me, Saturn. Good luck in the competition. Thank you. It's always nice to speak to you. <laughs>